kids welcome to archie series by heavens publishing house and i am archie sethi and i am going to take up the english series for class 3 this is your course book english skylights and today we are going to take up a very interesting story that is the king and the tailor bird do you all like listening to stories i know you do so tell me how many of you have pets at your home many of you right so do you have a pet identify the pets shown below and tick the pet you have if you don't have a pet tick the one you would like to adopt so if you have a cat you have a dog you tick in front of that animal and also tick if you wish to adopt any of these so this is a cat a dog a parrot a fish a rabbit or a cow so let's talk about me i have a fish I have fish at my home and I also have a cute little puppy so I'm going to tick puppy and fish all of you you please tick about the pet you have in your house right okay now what is this story all about This lesson is about a king who was very greedy. He loved money a lot and he did not like to spend it at all, right? And also he was very cruel. He was very harsh. He had no kindness for animals or birds. He was a very unkind king. But a small tailor bird taught him a good lesson for lifetime do you know what is a tailor bird kids it is a small bird and it is called a tailor bird for a reason why because it uses leaves it makes small holes in them and it stitches those leaves together to make its nest interesting yes it is a small tailor bird that is going to teach this greedy king a lesson for a lifetime so are you all ready to read about this interesting story let's begin kids okay so this is tuni tuni was a tailor bird and this as you can see is the king who was very greedy and cruel and also very very unkind right so let's see tuni was a tailor bird and where did tuni live he lived in the garden of a king right so this little bird tuni used to live in the king's garden okay one day the king was counting his money in his garden you can see that the king is counting all his money by sitting in the garden he took a gold coin out of a big sack there was a big sack he was having and he took out a small gold coin out of that big sack he held the coin between his finger and thumb and counted he was counting 10001 10002 he was going like this but he did not see one coin fall from the bag and roll under the table so while he was counting all those gold coins what happened one gold coin fell from the table and it rolled under the table and the king had no idea about it 
Tuni saw the gold. The king did not know that one coin had rolled under the table, but there was one bird, Tuni, that was sitting on the tree. She saw the gold coin and with a swag, he carried it in his beak to his nest. Right? See, she quickly stole that gold coin and flew away to her, to his nest. He was so pleased. Tuni, the bird, was so pleased that he flew to the king's side. She was so excited and happy that she was able to steal a coin from the king that she came back and flew to the king's side and sang. She started singing a song. Let's see what she is singing. She is saying, the king doesn't know where his money has rolled. Tuni the tailor bird has got his gold. So Tuni came near the king and started singing this song. The king doesn't know where his money has rolled. Tuni the tailor bird has got his gold. Oh my god, now the king who was told as a miser, he did not like to spend his money at all. He was very angry upon hearing that song. What he did? He was very angry that the bird had stolen his money. So he ordered his guards to take the gold coin from the tailor bird's nest. And the guards did so. So what the king did? He ordered all his guards to go and take the gold coin back from the tailor bird's nest. And the guards did as they were ordered by the king. They brought back the gold coin. Then Tuni flew over the king's head and sang. What did she sing again? She started again singing a song near the king. She was flying over the king's head and singing, Oh my dear, isn't it funny? The king has stolen Tuni's money. Right? So again, the king became so furious. He became so angry that the bird is saying that king has stolen Tuni's money. The king stamped his feet. He very noisily and very angrily put his feet down. With anger, he shouted at his guards. He was very angry and he shouted with anger at his guards. What did he say? He said, catch that bird. He ordered the guards to catch the bird this time. He said, all the day, the guards chased Tuni as he flew from one tree to tree. But at the end, they caught him and put him in a cage. So all the guards, they were running after Tuni. She was flying from one tree to the other. But at the end of the day, the guards were able to catch Tuni and Tuni was put in a cage. Right? So let's see what happens next. The king told the queen. Now the king is telling the queen make the tailor bird into a stew for my dinner. He's telling the queen to cook this tailor bird for his dinner into a stew. So the queen took Tuni out of his cage your Highness, begged Tuni. As she was about to cook Tuni, Tuni begged the Queen. What did she say? She said, Your Highness, spare me. Please forgive me. Please let me go. You can save my life. She begged the Queen. She requested her to let her go, to spare her. Why? What will my babies do without me? She said that I have small babies who are waiting for me back in the nest 
and so she requested her, she begged her to let her go and let her go back to her babies. So the queen, she was a kind-hearted woman. She felt sorry for the brave bird. She felt pity on him and she let him go. What the queen did? She let Tuni go and she made a stew with a frog instead. What she did? She made a stew with a frog. She cooked the frog and served it to the king. Now what happened? The king was eating the stew and he said, that was a tasty stew, said the king at the end of his meal. Now the bird won't bother me anymore. At that moment, Tuni flew into the room through the window and sang. Tuni was a bird that did not give up. Again she came through the window and she started singing another song. Let's see what she sang. She said, if only he knew, if only he knew, a frog not I was in his stew. Right? Interesting. She so this made the king go wild with anger. The king was wild with anger. He caught the tailor bird himself. This time he did not order his guards to do anything. He himself caught the bird. And then he called his guards and said, stand there, ready with your sticks. So he tell, told them to be ready with their sticks. If he flies off, strike him down. He told them, if Tuni, if this little bird tries to fly away from my hand, you strike him hard. You strike the bird hard with your stick. The guards got all ready. The king then called for a glass of water and said, I will swallow this bird. What did he say? Bring me a glass of water. He ordered a glass of water and said, I am going to swallow this bird with water. Hmm. So, saying this, he popped Tuni in his mouth. But at that moment, the king wanted to Sneeze at two, right? So, what a sneeze it was. At two, and out flew Tuni, and she was free again. Then the guard swung his stick and missed the bird. As she flew, the guards tried to strike the bird with their sticks, and but they missed it. But he hit the king who tumbled over. The king fell down. The guard, by mistake, instead of hitting the bird, he hit the king and the king fell down. He tumbled over. Right? Then the tailor bird again laughed and again sang a song. Let's see. Look at the king upon his knees. Tony the tailor bird made him sneeze. Isn't it so funny? It is, right? So, this small story is adapted by Upen Kishore Ray Chaudhary. Right? And what is the moral that you learn from this story? Greed is always bad for us. A greedy person can never be successful in life. He can Never enjoy life to its fullest. Greed is a curse for everyone. So children, greed is a very, very bad thing. And we must stay away from it. Right? A person who is greedy, he can never attain success in his life. He can never be happy as it is a curse for everyone. So remember, never to be greedy in your life, right? So let's see what a tailor bird is known for. The tailor bird is known for its ability to make 
intricate nets by punching holes in the edges of a leaf with the help of its beak. Right? The tailor bird punches small holes along the edge of the tree of the leaf and stitches them together to make a beautiful nest for itself. Right? So let's see the word meanings of the difficult words that we might have come across this chapter. First we have tailor bird, a bird which stitches leaves together to make a nest. Clear? Right. Miser, a person who loves money and does not like to spend it just like our king. He was a miser. He was a spendthrift. He did not like to spend his money at all. Next we have funny. Funny means strange or odd. Right? Next we have stamped. Stamped means we saw that the king stamped his foot with anger. So that means to put the feet with a noise. Right? Will you all remember all these meanings children? Okay. Now let us start doing read and write. Okay, so pick the correct answer. Number one, Tony was a, correct, it was a tailor bird. So we will pick option C, Tony was a tailor bird. One day the king was counting his soldiers' money, swords or crowns. Yes, he was counting his Money, right? Number three, the bird had dashed the gold coin. What did the bird do? She stole the gold coin. So, the bird had stolen the gold coin, right? Number four, the king asked the queen to make the tailor bird into a... What did he order the queen? He ordered him to make the toonie, to make the tailor bird into a stew that he was going to have for his dinner. Right? All clear to all of you? Very good. Now, let's see these fill in the blanks. What does the first one say? The king doesn't know where his dash has rolled. So, what did the king did not know about? He doesn't know where his gold coin has rolled. Right? Number two, the king was wild with very good anger. Tuni made him wild with anger. Right? Number three. If only he dash, if only he dash, a frog knot. I was in his dash. Right? So, we have to complete these lines that Tuni sang. So, if only he knew, if only he knew, a frog knot. I was in his Stew, right? So, stew. Right, children? Number four, the king shouted at his guards. What did he order his guards to do? He said, catch that bird. So, we write bird. Understood? Now, number five, the king then called a glass of Water. He called for a glass of water. And what did he say? And said, I will swallow the bird. He said that this time he was going to swallow the bird alive with water. Right? Now, let's do 
true, true or false. Ready? Come, let's begin. Number one, Tuni bird lived in jungle. So, where did Tuni live? He lived in the king's garden. So, no, this statement is not true. We will write false. Tuni bird lived in the garden of the king. Right? Number two. The king knew where his money has rolled. The king, did he know where his money has rolled? No, he had no idea. So again, this statement is wrong and we'll write F. Number three, the king asked queen to make the tailor bird into a stew for his dinner. Yes, that is True, he did ask the queen to make the tailor bird into a stew. So this is true. Right? Number four, the queen had pity on the bird. Is it true? Did the queen felt pity for the bird? She did. Yes. True. Now, number five, the king killed the bird. So tell me, was he able to kill the bird? No, he could not do anything about the bird. Right? So it is false. All of it is clear to you or not children? Any doubts regarding this? Shall we move on? Good. Okay, now we will answer these questions. So, first one is, who was Tuni? Who was Tuni? Tuni was a tailor bird, right? Tuni was a tailor bird. Okay, let's move on to number two. Where did Tuni live? Tell me. All of you know this. Where did Tuni live? Tuni lived in King's Garden. Tuni lived in the King's Garden. Right? Number three. What was the king doing in the garden? What was he doing in the garden, children? Yes, exactly. He was counting all his money. So we write, he was counting his money. Right? Number four, did the king count all his money? Do you think so? No, there was one gold coin he had no idea about that it has rolled under the table and Tuni, the tailor bird, had stolen it. So, no, he was not able to count all his money. So, we we'll write no. Right? Next we have, what did Tuni do with the gold coin? What did Tuni, the tailor bird, do with the gold coin? See, stole it and flew with it to her nest. So, she stole it and took it to her nest. Right children? Are all these questions clear to you? Can we move on? Very good. Thank you. Now, way with words. Let's see. Read these questions and answers. You can give positive or negative replies to these questions. So children, do you know what are positive and what are negative responses that you can give to any person? So, when you say, yes, I'm ready to do this, yes, I'm this, yes, I'm going to do that. So, when you say, yes, it 
is a positive reply. It is a positive statement. And if you reply in negative, that means you say, no, she is not a teacher. No, I don't like bread. No this, no that. So, whenever your statement includes a no, okay, that statement or that reply becomes a negative reply, right? So, let's see some of the examples for the same. Number one, the question is, is she a teacher? So, there can be two replies to this question. First one is positive. What will be the positive reply? That, yes, she is a teacher. It is a positive reply. Yes. And how can you give a negative reply for this? No, she isn't a teacher. Right? So, this is a negative reply. Number two says, are you ill? Right? It is asking you a question. Are you ill? So, again, you can respond in two ways, positive or negative. So, the positive reply you will say, yes, I am. I am ill. Right? And if you want to say, no, I am not, that means it is a negative reply that you are giving. Right? Same way, we have, do you drink milk? So, for the positive reply, you can say, yes, I do. And if you do not drink milk, you will say, no, I don't. Right? Number four, do you like tea? Again, it can have two responses. So, positive response is, yes, I do. And the negative says, no, I don't. I don't like tea. Simple. Now, number five. Have you done your homework? Right? So, positive reply. Yes, I have. Yes, I have done my homework. And negative would be, no, I haven't. If you have not done your homework, that would be a negative reply. Right, children? Is it clear to all of you? Now, let's see these questions and their answers. How do you answer the questions? First question is, what is your name? How do you answer this question? Very simple. You say, my name is so and so. For example, it says, my name is Amita. Right? Number two says, who is your father? So, what will you do? You will give your answer as, Mr. Verma is my father or Mr. Sethi is my father. Right? What is your age? I am 10 years old. I am 12 years old. So, there is only one answer to all these questions. All these questions cannot have a positive or a negative reply. All these questions will have fixed or certain answers. Now, number four says, which game do you like to play? So, which game is your favorite? You will say, I like to play cricket, I like to play badminton, whatever is your favorite game, you will give your answer accordingly. Is it okay children? Is it clear to all of you that there are some questions which can have both a positive or a negative reply, whereas there are certain questions which have a proper answer that is neither negative nor positive. Right? So now answer these following questions with either a positive or a negative reply. So children these are certain questions that can have two responses. Right? A positive or it can be negative. So let's see the first one. It says do you work hard? So what is it? Do you work hard? I'm sure you all are very hard workers. I'm sure you all are working very hard too, right? Yes, I do. Right? So number two says, is your mother's name Shanti? So is it true? Is your mother's name Shanti? So right, yes it is. 
And if it's not, you'll say, no, it isn't. Right? That my mother's name is not Chanti. So, this was a positive reply and this was a negative reply. Right? Number three says, were you absent yesterday? So, if you were absent, you'll write, yes, I was. Or, if you were present, so you will say, no, I wasn't. So, if you say, yes, I was, it will be a positive reply. Right? And, if you were present, so you will say, no, I wasn't. So, that will become a negative reply. Right? Number four is Kamal your brother? Is your brother's name Kamal? If it is, you will write yes. If it is not, you will write no. Is Kamal your brother? No, he isn't. He is not my brother. So again, this is a negative. It can be negative for some and positive for a few others of you. Right? Number five. Will you attend my birthday party? So, what do you plan to do? If you plan to attend the birthday party, you will say, yes, I will. It will become a positive reply. Or, if you will not be able to attend the birthday party, you can say, no, I won't. And that will become a negative response. Right? So, Negative and positive reply. Is it clear to you children? Very good. Let's move on. Hmm. So it is grammar time. Now let's see what is simple past tense. Children, we know about three tenses, right? Past tense, present tense and future tense. So, past tense means actions that have taken, uh, that actions, it, past tense is used to express actions that have taken place at some point of time before, right? And present tense is used to express actions that are taking place right now, at this moment. Right? And for the future tense, we express actions that will take place at some certain point of time. Right? So, today we are going to talk about simple past tense. Where do we use it? We use the simple past tense to express actions that took place in the past. That means you have already finished doing those actions, right? In the simple past tense, we use the past tense of the verb, right? What are verbs? They are the action words. So, suppose the play is the word, play is the verb. What will be the past tense? You will add ed to play and it will become played. That means you have finished playing, right? It was the action that took place in the past. Right, now let's see some more examples. First one says, the teacher asked me a difficult question. That means this event, this action has already taken place, right? So we have used the simple past tense of the verb ask. Right? Number two, I gave the correct answer. Right? That means you have already given the correct answer in the past. So we have used the simple past tense of the verb give. Give is the simple past tense of the verb. Sorry, gave is the simple past tense of the verb give. Now, Number three, the teacher felt happy. The teacher felt happy at some point in the past, right? So, we have used the past tense of the verb feel. 
Is it okay? Is it understood children? Right? Now, the words printed in bold letters are all verbs. All these words that I have circled, they are written in bold and they are all verbs. Right? They are all action words. Verbs are the action words. These all verbs are in the simple past tense. All these verbs have taken the simple past tense. Right? In the simple past tense, we use the past tense of the verb. We know that in some cases, the past tense is formed by adding ed to the root form of the verb. Right? So, let's see. For example, the root form of this verb was ask and to convert it into simple past tense, we simply added ed to it and it became simple past tense. Right? Similarly, there are some other cases where we have to learn the past tense of the verbs where you just cannot add ed to make it into a past tense. You have to learn the past tense. For example, go becomes went in the simple past tense and buy becomes bought. Right? There are so many such words which cannot be made into past tense by adding ed to them. We have to learn their past tenses. Right? Is it clear? Let's move on. Now, we will be doing this exercise. Fill in the blanks with the correct form of the simple past tense given in the brackets. You are given simple, you are given some forms of verbs and what you have to do, you have to fill the simple past tense of these verbs in these blanks. Right? Number one, we dash the picnic very much. So, you have already enjoyed the picnic in past. Picnic has already taken place. So, we will add ed to the word enjoy and it will become we enjoyed the picnic very much. Right? This is the simple past tense of the verb enjoy. Right? Number two. Mother dashed the flask with fresh drinking water. What did the mother do? She filled. She has already done that action. So we will write she mother filled the tub. The flask with fresh drinking water. Right? Number three. The children dashed the zoo last week. What did the children do? Last week they visited the zoo. Right? So, we will write the children visited the zoo last week. Right? Number four. I dash with my grandparents for two days. You have to make the past tense with the verb stay. So it will be stayed. I stayed with my grandparents for two days. Number five says we dash for you 15 minutes. You have to make the verb with Wait. So, what will be the past tense of wait? Waited. So, we waited for you for 15 minutes. Right? Are all these parts clear to you? Good. Now, we have to fill in the blanks with the simple past tense of the verbs given in the brackets. We are given certain clues that we will use and these are the clues. We will write their simple past tense form and fill in these blanks. First one. I dash the answer in my notebook. So, what is the simple past tense of write? Yes, it is wrote. So,
So, I wrote the answer in my notebook. Right? Number two, he dashed a beautiful portrait of his friend. Make the simple past tense of make. It is made. So, he made a beautiful portrait of his friend. Done? Number three, she dashed up the whole cake in five minutes. So, with eat, the past tense becomes ate. She ate up the whole cake in five minutes. Number four, mother dashed me to go to sleep early. She told you the past tense of tell is told. So it will become mother told me to go to sleep early. Right? Number five, Mrs. Jan dash us English last year. What did Mrs. Jan do? From the word peach, the simple past tense becomes taught. So we will write taught. Mrs. Jan taught us English last year. So are all these simple past tenses clear to you? Right? Shall we move on children? Thank you. Now it is the time to write. And what are we going to write? We are going to write a letter to your father asking him to buy a toy robot for you. Right? Do you like toy robots? I'm sure you do. So, let's begin writing the letter to your father. So, children, whenever you write letters to maybe some family members or friends, it becomes an informal letter. And what is the format for starting the letter? Let's see. Firstly, you will write your address. That means the sender's address will come in the first place. Suppose I say house number 123, name of the colony. Let's say XYZ colony. You can write the names of your colonies where you live. And next comes the city. Suppose I am in Delhi. So I write Delhi over here. Right? So this is the sender's address. Right? Done? Now you will leave a blank line. Leave a line here. And now you will write the current date. What is the date? Say it is August 19, 2023. This is the date you are writing this letter on. Right? Shall we move on? After this, you will again leave a line. And now you will begin your letter. So, you have to write a letter to your father. So, what will you write? Dear dad, dear father, or whatever you address your dad with. So you write, dear dad, dear father. And how do you start a letter? First, you give greetings. You say, hello. What you say? I hope this letter finds you in the best of your health and spirit. Or you can say, I hope you're doing well. Right? There are so many things that you can start your letter with. Now, you will again leave a line 
after the first paragraph. And now you will start your second paragraph in which you will say your request about asking him to buy you a toy robot. So, how are you going to convince your father for the same? You must have some reasons in mind, right? Like suppose you can say, mm, as promised, I have done very well in my exams this term and I have secured first position in the class. So, as a reward, I want you to buy me a toy robot. Or you can say, many of my friends have it and I also have been eyeing it for some time now. So, you can give various reasons and try to convince your father. Right? Give reasons and try to convince your father that why he should buy you a toy robot. Try to convince your father by giving reasons. Right? Okay? And after the second paragraph, again you are going to leave a line and you will end the letter by saying, please give my love and regards to mother. Or you can say, sending you lots of love, sending lots of love to you and mother, right? And you will end your letter again by writing your name. You write it, your loving son or daughter and you write your name, right? Is it clear to you? So are you all going to write this letter today? Very good. Use these points. Take care of the format. It is very important to write according to the format. This was an informal letter. Remember this children. Okay? So, this was all for this chapter children. And I will see you in my next video with my next chapter. Bye children.